The difference between chess and, say, the markets or even poker for that matter is that in chess, you know what's going to happen. Like, if something goes wrong, you're going to lose the game. Um, But it's also very much within your control. And if you look at the market or you look at poker, it is not in your control. So you can make the right decision and still lose, still be wrong and lose, even though you were right. The last big one I remember was Northridge. I think Northridge was the one that I was actually, I felt it, but I was too young to, I, I was too young to remember it. I think that was 1989 or 1990. Um, again, I was in California at that time, but, um, but obviously I was like two, two or three years old. So I, I have no recollection of it. Okay. How chess can make you better business and more successful at life. All right. This is an article by chess.com. Let's start here. When you see chess in movies, it's always associated with great minds. And there's good reason for this. Chess is the ultimate intellectual game. Being a great chess player requires requires superb strategic abilities, planning, calculation, pattern recognition, and making good trades investments. All these skills can be directly translated to business, like selling puts on Tesla that expired yesterday and you collect all the premium, for example. Um, In this article, we'll go over some of the ways that chess can help you become more successful in a business. All right. Um, okay. This is going to be a very Pago article. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let, let's keep going. Um, uh, ch- chess, chess makes you consider uh, strengths and weaknesses. Chess helps you create plans. Chess teaches you to adapt your plan. Chess makes you manage your resources better. Chess makes you manage your resource or ch- chess, chess makes you manage your resources better. And chess shows you the importance of learning from The Masters, all right. I am playing the SEC Grand Prix today, you guys. I am. Um, Let's keep going. Uh, Chess makes you consider your strengths and weaknesses. If you've never watched a video of a great chess player explaining their thought process as they played, you probably should. It gives you tremendous insight into how the mind of good players works, and it will help you improve your own game. No, you guys, I did not write this article. Um, So, yes. Okay. Uh, If you've done it already, you probably realize one thing. They're always looking at each other's strengths and weaknesses in a position. Um, Little, little, little bit, little bit, little bit oversimplified. But anyway, they they know that it doesn't make much sense to challenge a player on one side of the board where all their forces are. They also notice when the other player makes a mistake and creates weaknesses in their position. All right. um, So so what I'm going to say about this comment is that actually this is generally how your mind should work if you're a top grandmaster. But in the heat of the moment when you're playing a game, a lot of this general, the general concepts or general thoughts, like what are the best squares for pieces? Where do things belong? A lot of those sorts of um, those sorts of concepts actually go out the window when you're playing blitz and rapid chess against other top players because you're very focused more on intuition and feel for where pieces belong generally. So while this is true, it actually is not... um, it doesn't tend to apply to top level games and blitz and rapid and classical chess at hundred percent applies though. Um, all right. The video below is an excellent example of that. GM Narodinsky is playing a 512 rated player and goes over their mistakes. Watch how Narodinsky immediately recognized how white six F three would get them into trouble later. Now, again, as I would say, this is obviously true. You've seen Danny do it. You've seen me do it. I mean, all, all of us will be able to say like they play some moving. It's like, we're like, that's just a mistake. We know it's a mistake intuitively. Um, but I will say when we're under the pressure and it's very, it's very tight, some of these things actually we, we forget to think about because then we're just thinking purely on, on intuition. Um, anyway, let's keep going. All right. If you have some business background, you've probably heard of the SWOT analysis. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, show the video. Good one. Um, okay. I, I'm not a business guy. I don't know what SWOT, uh, means exactly. Um, uh, yeah. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Okay. I, you know, I'll try, I'll try to use this today. You guys, I'm gonna try to use this in the speech chess championship. We'll try to use squat and see, um, and see if it makes me a better chess player today. Okay. I'm gonna try to use this, this, I'm gonna try to tinker with my brain today. And, uh, during speech chess championship, maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Okay. So that means that when I play, I need to think about what are my opponent's strengths? What are their weaknesses? What are my opportunities to win, I guess? And what are their threats? Or what are my threats? Uh, I'm a little confused. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Chess helps you create plans. Chess players are familiar with the adage that a bad plan is better than no plan at all. 
Moving your pieces around with no bigger goal in mind will leave you nowhere. Worse yet, it can make you waste valuable tempi and eventually the game. This is very true no matter whether it's uh, chess, whether it's uh, whether it's League of Legends, whatever it is. This actually reminds me of um, a video I watched some time ago on, on TSM Reggie, who, who the founder of TSM, where he basically said... Uh, well he didn't say it but other people said that when he was playing league uh professionally he was basically the the, the game caller he was he was calling out what the plan what they should be what they should be doing and um in, in every game and he made the point that it's better to have have everyone doing the same thing but doing it badly rather than having everybody uh with different objectives and doing it very well so this, this makes sense no matter what the what the game is um all right let's let's go it's it's fair to say the same about business if you don't have an action plan and long-term strategy you probably won't get very far chess helps you to develop the habit of stepping back and looking at the bigger picture such as realizing that tesla stock is obviously not going to go down in the in the short term chess teaches you to adapt your plans legend has it that during the 1958 soccer world cup the coach for the soon-to-be champion brazil team was talking to the players before their games against the soviet union after the coach explained his detailed plan to defeat the Soviets, one of the best players on his team asked, have the Russians agreed on all of this then? All right. As much as making plans is a crucial part of chess and business, the fact is that your opponents have plans of their own. They will do everything in their power to frustrate your plans and to make things go the way they want. Okay. Pretty logical so far. Very, very logical. All right. Um, okay. There's a picture good chess players know that sometimes they need to adapt their plans to new positions that arise after their opponents move if a better move is possible they don't hesitate to play it if a bigger threat appears they take the time to defend against it um now again this is all very nice and nice and fine and slow games of chess and blitz and rapid however a lot of this deep con the, these deep thoughts or like worrying about these things does not apply um so so in, in like this is what i would say like for example let's just say danny and i play a game of blitz chess we're, we're a lot of this a lot of these basics are going to go out the window because it's going to be intuition time usage just thinking on the fly what is the best move in a short window of time whereas if we're playing in a slow game we'll have a lot more time to unscramble our brain and a lot of this stuff will apply so that's one of the big differences between playing like blitz and playing playing slow classical chess do i play tennis yes i do actually play tennis um all right in the fast-paced world that we live in, adaptation is crucial to the success of a business. Chess will teach you the adaptation skills necessary to keep your company alive and thriving, such as realizing that when that you know when you're when you're kind of plateauing, you're not doing so well in chess. Maybe it's time to become a streamer and do a lot better and keep your business thriving and grow your brand. All right, chess makes you manage your resources better. In chess, everyone starts with limited resources, and it's up to each player to decide how to use those resources to achieve their goal. Good chess players know how to maximize the strengths of the strengths of each piece and minimize their weaknesses. They also know how to make their pieces work together because they understand that a well-coordinated army is worth more than the sum of each unit. This, of course, reminds me of um, the, the great book, uh, The Art of War. The, actually, not the uh, not the traditional one that was written by Sun Tzu, but there was a there was a version of The Art of War that was written by um, that was written by Machiavelli. I think in, in like the that like the 1550s or around there. And I remember. Um, I remember there was some some line in like the third chapter i think it was and uh that he basically was saying that like depending on how how you structure structure your units you know you want you basically have to put the uh the weakest units up in the front and you have to mix it all around um he machiavelli also wrote the prince you guys but personally i preferred the art of war uh that was it was more military strategy uh you've read machiavelli of course i've read machiavelli i mean who hasn't read machiavelli um, who hasn't read about the Medici's and, and the Middle Ages in Italy? I mean, come on, you guys. Pretty standard. Pretty standard stuff. All right, let's keep moving along. Um, okay, let's let's keep going. Uh, business people must also know how to make the most out of their resources, be it money, time, or the abilities of their team. A successful business person is always striving to maximize output with minimal investment. Taking a lesson from chess managers and business owners can do wonders by perfecting resource management. Okay, so you guys are you guys are probably asking, you're asking like, why have I read Machiavelli? This is gonna sound really cheesy. Um, let me see if I can find this video. Um, and I, it's going to be too hard to find it right now. But but anyway, I, I grew I grew up watching that show, and my favorite char character in that show was actually Lex Luthor. Um, now again, someone might be able to find this clip because I'm I'm not going to have time to find it or, or go look really deeply. Uh, but my favorite character is Lex Luthor in the show Smallville. So so I really like Smallville, and of course the, the the main actor Michael Rosenbaum was amazing in that. And 
So I really like the show. And there's a, there's an episode, I want to say it's like season three, where Lex Luthor is basically, he's having some conversation. And someone asked him, like, you know, what, what was he doing? He says he, he grew up reading a lot of, like, Machiavelli, Sun Tzu, um, Nietzsche, and so forth. And and basically, like, as, as cheesy as that sounds, I, re I remember that episode very well. And I actually started reading those books for that reason. Uh, which, of course, that sounds really stupid and, and like, just, just being a naive little, little teen or something. But but I actually did read those re read a lot of those books specifically because uh, because of that episode in the show. So um, <laughs> take that for what you will, you guys. But that's uh, that's that's actually the story behind it, uh, behind why I read why I read a lot of this stuff. That's fair. Yeah, exactly. Um, it sounds really stupid, obviously. I mean, it sounds really stupid, but that's that's actually the truth behind all of it. So um, yeah, I want I want to be Lex Luthor. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I mean, educating yourself because of a TV show episode is all right. Yeah, no, true, true. Anyway, let's keep going. All right. Chess shows you the importance of learning from... It's season one, episode 17. Um, if someone can find a clip on YouTube, I'll watch that clip. Um, uh, Chess shows you the importance of learning from the masters. In Anders Ericsson and Robert Poole's book, Peak, the author uses scientific studies to discuss what makes people achieve peak performance. Their book talks about one of the most inspiring and to some degree bizarre experiments in history in history the birth of raising birth and raising of geniuses by laszlo and clara polgar um laszlo polgar an educational psychologist firmly believed uh firm, firmly believed that any healthy newborn could become a genius if raised for that his theory he explained his theory to clara a foreign language teacher and they both decided to test the idea after marrying and having three girls the couple successfully raised them to become chess geniuses one of them, GM Judith Polgar, is still considered the best female player of all time. All right, that's a picture of the sisters. Among other things, part of the training regimen of the children included studying the chess games of masters. By analyzing what the best players in history did, the girls could apply the ideas they saw to their own games. They borrowed everything that worked and importantly discarded everything that didn't. They built astronomically successful careers doing so. Analyzing what works and what doesn't is part of any serious chess player, any, any any serious chess player's life, and it's a skill that makes all the difference in business too. The savvy business person studies the best practices in their industry to follow and improve on them too. Chess will reinforce the necessity of constantly learning from others how you can improve your own business. All right, um, yeah, so pretty pretty good um pr pretty good article. It's pretty generic. I mean, I guess what I would say uh. In general terms, and because a couple of people have said this to me, and, and I think it's true, is one of the hardest things in life is making decisions. Um, so if, if you think about life, making decisions, you know, in split seconds, making decisions on the fly is very difficult. And what happens with chess, classical chess, obviously, is, is, is a little bit different, but it's still kind of the same, is that you're forced into situations in blitz chess, especially where you have to make split second decisions on the fly. You have to make decisions. You can't really worry about what the outcome is. You just have to make decisions. And um, and in general in life, I think that's one of the hardest things for people to do is make decisions. Because if you think about life, how many really difficult decisions are there to make? Probably, okay, who are you, who are you gonna like be with or marry? That's an, that's an obviously one of the most important decisions you're gonna make in your life. Probably, are you gonna buy a house? Maybe buying a car? Those are two other decisions that are pretty serious. Maybe where you wanna go to college is another one. But if you think about those, about, about like hardcore decisions in life, I wanna say those are probably the only decisions um, uh, the only decisions that are like seriously like difficult decisions in life for the most part other than that most people go to go to work they work their job but you know they aren't going to be ceos of companies and they aren't gonna have to make these really difficult decisions whereas i think in chess what happens is um whereas in chess it's it, every game is a decision you're basically just making non-stop decisions throughout the entire game over and over and over again and um and so I think that is one of the things that maybe is more helpful for chess players, especially if they go into um, go into to various fields of business, because you're already accustomed. Your brain is hardwired to making decisions um, nonstop, really. And so I think because of that, it's it's really um, it's it's really it's really useful from that standpoint, is what I would say. Now, I'm not saying that, of course, like being a, being a chess player uh, is going to make you great at business or anything like that. But I do think that is one of those things that in life. Uh, people generally don't have to deal with is is making decisions and chess definitely you're just making decisions all the time so it's a game of uh it's a game of uh decisions 
so so that that's that, that's what i would say um in, in general terms um now as far as as far as i go i would say that um i don't think that but like necessarily playing chess would make me good at business I, I i would say however as people know i do i do some stuff in the markets and um and generally the only thing that i would say is that i always have some idea of what all the outcomes are or, or what what i'm trying to think of in terms you know I'll, I'll give you i'll give you a specific example um let's just say I'll, I'll look at like i'll use tesla as, as a perfect example where like i do trade in and out of that through 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 options and um when i'm looking at it, i'm generally thinking you know what what are what are the upside catalysts what are, what's the potential what 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 can happen on the downside like is you know some other company like lucid or um or Nio or Fisker or any one of those companies going to come out with some new product at a much cheaper price point. You know, what are the upsides? What are the downsides? Sort of what are the outs as well? Like, you know, let's just say something goes wrong. Are there any backdoor outs? Uh, now I'm talking more, I'm mixing poker as well in here. Uh, but it's like always looking at what the various, uh, what what are all the outcomes and what, what do you have even if things go the wrong way? However, having said that, one of the, the most difficult things, and I, I actually will apply a little bit of poker in here too, um, is that the difference between chess and say the markets or even poker for that matter is that in chess you know what's going to happen like if something goes wrong you're going to lose the game um but it's also very much within your control and if you look at the market or you look at poker it is not in your control so you can make the right decision um in either of either of those either poker or um or uh, or even like trading for that matter and still lose still be wrong and lose even though you were right whereas in chess generally if you're right if you're playing anybody except magnus carlson and you're right you're probably get, you, I'm not saying you're going to win, but you're going to have good, the outcomes are going to be very good, um, no matter what. So that's kind of the thing that's, that's very difficult with, um, with, uh, with, with chess certainly is because it's zero, uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's like, it, you know, in chess, there is very limited luck when, when you, when you play, when you play, when you play the, play the right moves in chess, good things are going to happen when you make the right moves in other things that doesn't, um, that doesn't mean it you're 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 uh you're you're taking a funny article written by an intern too seriously no but i mean a lot of people have written articles like this you guys a lot of people have it's not it's this is not just like a one-off a lot of people have said this so i'm trying to actually think about it um in, in a more more serious serious manner of speaking um at any rate you know i i would say the the in terms of people who play chess at a serious level who become very good at business there's only one who stands out that would be uh that would be Peter, uh, Peter Thiel, who, who I've, you know, I've, I've, I've met on a couple, I've met on like two occasions, I think it is. Um, so, you know, I, I, I have, I've never asked him what his take is on whether chess like made him a billionaire or not. Um, but, but maybe I'll, I'll ask him at some point. Cause he's the only one I can think of right off. Who's, uh, who, who's done that. Chess is a game of complete information. Unlike poker and stonks. That's true too. Yeah, no, very true.